Bladda, can you please uh, state your name for the record? Um, my first name is Trent, T-R-E-N-T, -E and my last name is Villata, B as in Victor, I-L-E-T-A. And how are you employed? I'm a special agent with the Iowa Division of Criminal Investigation. How long have you been a DCI agent? Uh, 17 years. Okay. Any prior law enforcement experience? Yeah, I was a police officer for about 11 years before that. Uh, where at? Uh, most of it was a city in Milwaukee, Wisconsin, and then I did a couple years in Coralville, Iowa. And uh, in your the course of your career as a DCI agent, have you worked uh, homicide investigations? Yes, I have. Do you know approximately how many? Um, no. Uh, I'm guessing between eight, eight and, or five and nine death cases a year for 17 years, something like that. Do you uh, work a certain area of the state? Um, originally, yes. Uh, originally, I was the, assigned to the western third of Iowa, and now I'm in Zone 4, which is basically the southeast part of Iowa. Okay. And there are other um, agents that do what you do in the state, is that correct? E yes, that's correct. There's We have four zones. Uh, we split the uh, state up, basically. I think it's almost by population now and uh, there's roughly 25 of us. All right. Back in November of 2021, were you assigned to work the disappearance and the death of uh, Noema Graber? Yes, I was. When did that occur? Uh, she was reported uh, missing on October 3rd of 21. Um, we got uh, a call for assistance from the Fairfield Police Department that evening on the 3rd. On November, November 3rd? Yes. Okay. Uh, whenever you first learned of the uh, disappearance of Ms. Graber, uh, what did you do? Um, so the DCI, we are an assist agency. Uh, we assist smaller departments that don't work a lot of uh, violent crimes, uh, major felony cases. Uh, we will come in and assist them. So. Uh, we kind of have a procedure when we get called out. Uh, first, the request for assistance is made by the department um, to a supervisor in DCI who assigns a case to a lead agent, a case agent, um, which would have been me in uh, this case. And then um, I will contact the requesting agency and kind of get a brief summary of what's going on on my way down to the area. So when would you have responded here to Fairfield? Uh, I think I got here somewhere between 9.30 and 10 p.m. And so at this point in time, can you just generally describe for the court uh, what the circumstances were of Noema Graber's disappearance? Sure. Um, on a, it'd be November 2nd, um, she was reported missing um, by her husband, Paul Graber. Uh, the Fairfield Police Department did, well, I'm sorry, it wasn't November 2nd, it was November 3rd. She was last seen alive on November 2nd. Um, the Fairfield Police Department throughout the day of the 3rd conducted a very thorough missing persons investigation, uh, checking pattern of life, that sort of thing. Um, so when I uh, originally got the call, they had just located uh, Noema Graber's body in a park in Fairfield. Okay. I'm going to show you what's been uh, previously entered as State's Exhibit 100. This is uh, State's Exhibit, Sentencing Exhibit 100. Who is this person? This is uh, Noema Graber. I believe it's her school picture. It's a photo that was provided by her family. Yes. Okay. And what can you tell us then about what you learned concerning uh, the last time Noema Graber was seen and uh, what the circumstances were of her disappearance? Uh, yeah, so she was, um, she had a kind of a pattern of life where at uh, 4 p.m. she would go to a local park and uh, do a walk around the park. Um, it was kind of well known. So uh, Fairfield Police Department was able to determine pretty early that she had left school at 4 p.m. on the 2nd. And uh, then 
they were able to determine that she actually had entered the park. Uh, but when she, when they went to check the park, her vehicle was not there, and they weren't able to locate her. Um, was there? I'm sorry to interrupt you. Was there any confirmation that she had left the school independent of someone seeing her leave? There, eventually, there was video located of her leaving, and I believe it was shortly before 4 p.m. Okay. All right. So her, uh, she was known to walk at what park here in uh, Fairfield? It's a uh, Chautauqua. Park. Is that a park here on the edge of town? Yes, it is. So when was uh, Noe McGraber actually reported missing by any family? It was the morning of the 3rd. And who was that that would have reported her missing? Uh, Paul Graber, her uh, husband. So as a result of... Uh, uh, Noema Graber being missing, Paul Graber reporting her missing. What steps did law enforcement take uh, that ultimately led you to her body? Sure. Um, like I said before, the Fairfield Police Department uh, uh, did a very good job of uh, missing persons investigation. They kind of followed uh, her daily activities. Um, they determined at some point during the day that uh, she was probably last at the park. They don't have her leaving the park. So uh, they they started a search of the park. That That is how they uh, eventually found her. And Chautauqua Park is uh, a fairly large area, is that correct? It, it is. It's got a, a long walking path, but it's pretty wooded. Um, it's just a scenic park. And as a result of that search of the park, was Noe McGraber ultimately found? Yeah, she was uh, located uh, kind of deep in the woods um, off the, the walking trail. Okay. I'm going to show you an overview of the park, States Exhibit 101. Can you see that? Yes. All right. Uh, what does this exhibit generally show us? Okay, so the um, orange or red little marker that says Chautauqua Park. That's kind of the center of the park. The line around that, that's the actual uh, uh, walking path. And then when you go to the up, upward center of the screen where it says body location, that is where she was found. Um, that's right by a railroad uh, bridge going over a stream. Okay. And I know the topography of this map does not uh, really come through on the satellite photo that we have here, but how would you generally describe that area where Noe McGraber was ultimately found? Um, so when you see the arrow that says access to railroad tracks, it's like a maintenance or truck path that would take you back to the tracks. Um, it's not a well-kept path, it's basically grass, uh, but you can actually exit off the trail into that grass and then you have to walk back quite a ways along the, the, the tracks themselves to actually get to where um, Noe McGraber was located. But again, she was uh, in the woods, kind of at the bottom of a deep slope. Um, so there was not easy access to her, to her body. Okay. Let's look at the next photo, Exhibit 102. Um, eventually here, in this case, were two suspects uh, developed in her death. Yes, it would be uh, uh, Willard Miller and then Jeremy Goodale. All right, and what does States Exhibit 102 show us with regard to where they lived here in Fairfield? Yeah, it's um, it's representing the location of the residences and kind of the distance between the residences and Chautauqua Park. And generally speaking, uh, what is the distance from the Miller residence to the location of uh, Noe McGraber's body in uh, Chautauqua Park. Yeah, I, I think we kind of agreed that it was roughly a mile, so it would be easy walking distance to uh, the park from his residence. And would Jeremy Goodale's um, residence be similarly located? Yeah, it would have been just a... After finding uh, Noe McGraver's uh, body, did law enforcement have any suspects? Um, yes, they did. The um, the way the body was uh, discovered, it was 
obviously a, a suspicious death. Um, she had been concealed, which was something that she couldn't have done herself. Um, and uh, Fairfield Police Department is just one of those police departments that has a good kind of uh, uh, feel for the community. And they had pretty quickly developed a few students who had made uh, threats towards Mrs. Graber. And did that include uh, Jeremy Goodale and or Willard Miller? Uh, the one the one that they had at the top of their whiteboard was uh, Willard uh, Miller talking about uh, uh, making Mrs. Graber disappear. So what, after uh, Noema Graber was located, what were your next steps in the investigation? Okay, so she was uh, underneath a tarp with a wheelbarrow on the top of her and then a uh, railroad tie on top of that. Uh, part of my responsibilities as a case agent is to determine what resources are needed um, as far as evidence collection, that sort of thing. Um, just from myself going out there along with a couple other people, um, we could tell pretty quickly we'd need, we'd need our lab response to help with evidence collection. Um, and then, of course, I had uh, other agents coming down. Um, really, the first hour or so was pretty uh, fluid as far as the investigation goes, where uh, we just have to develop leads and assign the leads. Uh, uh, figure out how to manage the crime scene. So usually the first hour is pretty busy. Entity as to who may have been responsible for Noe McGraver's death. Yeah, so when uh, I had arrived, uh, Fairfield Police Department had a whiteboard and they had several names. Like you said, uh, Willard Miller was at the top uh, making a threat towards uh, Mrs. Graber. Um, what we had discovered was uh, Another student named uh, John Burnett had showed up prior to us getting there, uh, uh, claiming to have information as to her disappearance. Uh, we called him pretty quickly back, and uh, when he came back in, he said that he had information uh, that would show who killed Mrs. Graber. Before we get into John Burnett's uh, information, had at this point in the investigation, at the time that he had showed up, at the law enforcement center uh, had the uh, vehicle that Noe McGraber drove, had that been found? No. Okay. So did you then uh, speak to John Burnett? Yes, yeah, so I assigned uh, two, two of the agents that were there, uh, Ryan Kedley and uh, Richard Vale. Um, we were uh, basically, like as I said, trying to get our feet on the ground but he appeared to be a good uh, first start, so they started talking with him. He he had come in to the police department with his, with his girlfriend, Kaylee, um, so uh, we didn't know if we'd have to interview them separately or not, but that's kind of how it started with John Burnett. And what exactly was it that John Burnett provided to you and other investigators uh, that assisted the uh, investigation? Yeah, he, he uh, brought in uh, screenshots of Snapchat that which were from uh, Jeremy Goodale, and they were very uh, descriptive in uh, basically describing the murder of Mrs. Graber that uh, Goodale and Miller had committed. And, and did these, uh, these were screenshots of text messages he had provided you or screenshots of Snapchats? Yeah, and, and forgive me, I'm not a good social uh, media descriptor but it's my understanding when uh, with snapchat that once you open the snapchat that is sent to you it'll disappear off your phone um, so the only way to actually say the snapchat is by screen shotting it or taking a picture with your other phone uh, because as soon as you leave it it'll delete so he had received a couple uh, John Burnett did had received a couple of disturbing uh, snapchats prior that he didn't save um, when he realized that uh, these were important. He started saving 
the actual Snapchats uh, to provide to the law enforcement. And we will talk about this a little bit later, uh, but ultimately were some of those uh, Snapchats captured and able to have been, been saved by law enforcement? Yes, uh, both through search warrant and then by actually taking pictures of uh, John Burnett's pictures. Is it uh, accurate to say that John Burnett, the information that he provided, uh, helped break this investigation and helped to solve uh, Noe McGraver's murder? Uh, I would say that's almost an understatement. It was pretty much everything to the investigation and it was relatively early. So. Um, at some point after John Burnett's interview, uh, were you able to determine the location of uh, Noe McGraver's van? Yes, he had said that um, in a conversation, it was either by phone or a previous uh, Snapchat that he didn't save, that Goodale had told him that uh, Mrs. Graber's van was at the end of a, a dead end road. Again, the Fairfield Police Department, knowing the community as well as they did, had a good idea what road that was. Um, Middle Glasgow Road, it was just a road that the kids would go to to hang out. Uh, so Lieutenant Kinsella drove out there and located the van in a few minutes. Okay, I wanna show you a overall exhibit here, 103. Um, what does this exhibit show us? Okay, so um, it's a, kind of a zoomed out picture of the, be the east end of uh, Fairfield. Um, the arrows show basically where the vehicle is located. That uh, it's just a long dead end road is um, Middle Glasgow. Her vehicle would have been then kind of off the road driven into uh, kind of a patch of trees, uh, somewhat concealed, but the police were able to locate it pretty quickly. Okay, I'm going to skip ahead to 106, if I could. Um, back it up one. Sorry, 105. Uh, what does uh, State's Exhibit 105 show us in relation to the van? Yeah, so that that would be the uh, basically the path that you would have to drive off the road to hide the van. If you look up in the top left corner, um, it's kind of hard to see because it's dark, but you can see the rear tail lights of the, of the van and license plate. It's kind of hidden in those trees there. And then we have State's Exhibit 106, which uh, this is a closer view of the van, correct? That's correct. And that is Noe McGraver's van, is that right? Yes. I assume the van was searched, is that correct? Yes, it was. Now, um, with in relation to the van and the location that we've just looked at here on the map and a little bit closer here in 105 and 106, was there any other uh, video, surveillance video, um, or anything of that nature that was located that would have helped uh, determine who was involved and where the van would have, uh, how it would have been used. Yeah, there was lots of video uh, involved with this case. Um, regarding the van winding up at its location in particular, the last house, I think it was Ryan Ford's house, um, had a camera that basically shows uh, the van going past and then later on to uh, what we described as male subjects, we couldn't really see who they were because it was from a distance uh, walking away from that location. But he's roughly, I don't know, three, 400 yards away from where the van would have been located. He would have been the first house that uh, if someone was leaving that area that uh, those people would have went by. Okay, and you were able to confirm that through a witness as well, is that correct? Yes, uh, they had a friend, um, and I have a hard time saying his last name. His first name is Sane. And uh, he was actually not involved in the case, but was called uh, was uh, called by Goodale to be picked up out on Glasgow Road. And uh, so the video will actually show him, the boys uh, that were walking down the road and the vehicle that came to pick them up. Uh, was his name Habib Sane? Yes. Okay. Yes.
and he would have been the one that would have gone out to pick them up uh, on the road after they would have left the van in this location that we see here in States Exhibit 106. Yeah, that, that's correct, and that would have been, I think, shortly before 5 p.m. This would have been on what date? On the 3rd. Okay. All right, um, ultimately, um, Agent Villada were search warrants conducted of both Willard Miller's home and Jeremy Goodale's home. Y yes, they were. When would those have been executed? Uh, they were later in the day. There was uh, quite a bit going on that night. Um, I think it was roughly 6 a.m. Uh, would have been on the 4th that uh, the search warrants would have been at the residences. And at this time, did you have some uh, idea as to what the cause of Noe McGraver's death was? The um, the one thing you kind of learn pretty quickly uh, when you examine bodies is uh, types of injuries kind of become readily apparent, certainly like uh, uh, bullet holes, stab wounds, that sort of thing. Uh, when I first looked at Noema Graber's body, I didn't really uh, observe any other injuries except to what appeared to be to some sort of um, like massive injury to her head. Um, generally, from my observations, that would be like blunt force trauma to the head. Um, you can never really tell what by what, but blunt force trauma. So um, we had an idea that it was a homicide and it was probably through uh, some sort of object hitting her very hard. Okay, so um, whenever you say blunt force trauma, would you have been looking for objects that could have caused that type of injury? Yes. Would that have included a baseball bat? Yes. And did you find a baseball bat at either one of the residences of Miller or Goodale? We had, and I think it came through uh, Jeremy, or not Jeremy, John Burnett again, that uh, uh, baseball bat that's uh, showed here in Exhibit 104 with like flames on it was the um, object used in the blunt force trauma. And this exhibit that we have up here that shows the bat, where is that location? That would be in uh, Willard Miller's room. So let's talk, let's go back to the park if we could. So did you and other um, officers thoroughly search the park along with your crime scene team? Yes, we did. And were other things found that would have been related to Noe McGraber's death? Yes. Okay, we're gonna walk through a number of photos here. Uh, the first one here is States Exhibit 107. What do we see here in 107? So that's uh, the path and as you see kind of at the bottom, of the uh, roadway there, that's a uh, law enforcement vehicle. This would be kind of looking down towards the uh, entrance to the railroad tracks, that uh, maintenance road. Okay. This would have been accessible to uh, anyone that would have been entering the park, is that correct? That's correct, yes. All right. States Exhibit 108, uh, well, let's go back to 107, one more question. Is that a trail that leads down to the area that we're getting ready to look at here in Exhibit 108? Yes. Okay. So 108 is now on the screen. Uh, what does Exhibit 108 show us? Okay, yeah. So um, with the previous picture, um, you would be looking down towards uh, this area where you see the crime scene tape. Um, that's the actual entrance into where the railroad tracks are located. And uh, basically in the middle, uh, right hand side of the picture that's kind of where we first start seeing uh, blood evidence okay and what can you be uh, further descriptive of that what, what did you exactly see um, it, it kind of again you don't want to uh, make huge assumptions but it really looked like uh, there was a major event there because there's a large amount of blood in that area okay. where that where would that have been specifically in this photo yeah it's kind of the right center of the photo um, it, uh, I don't know, if you go all the way to the right and up, I up to the middle. 
Yeah. That's fine. No, that works. Um, and the yellow tape that we see, where does uh, that take us if we go beyond that? So, yeah, once you walk past uh, underneath the tape, you're walking towards the railroad tracks. Okay. States Exhibit 109, is this the area just a little bit more to the right of the previous photo? Yeah, and, and yeah, yes, this is um, what I was trying to describe is if you would have kept going to the right, um, you're kind of looking right at where probably the assault happened. Um, lot, large amounts of blood still on the, the leaves and grass, um, kind of in the center of the photo there. Right, and exhibit 110, is that just the opposite of uh, 109? Yes, yeah, so you'll be look, standing at basically the crime scene tape looking up. Okay. The, and then 111? Uh, that would be just continuing down the path looking back towards the uh, path to the railroad tracks. And then 112. So this would be then, um, again, just uh, moving further back. You're still looking at the um, crime scene tape. This, this would give you a better, though, uh, representation of kind of how wide the area was um, that we're kind of talking about where everything happened. All right. So in these exhibits that we've looked at, uh, 108 through 112, uh, I know we're going to uh, play a portion of Jeremy Goodale's interview later in our presentation. Uh, but in relation to that interview, does this area generally match up with what he tells officers later as to where Noah McGraber was first attacked. Yes, it does. And going back to exhibit 109, I'm sorry, 110, uh, this area, it, there appears to be going back uphill, is that right? Yes. So you're standing at the bottom of a hill near that entrance to where we see the crime scene tape, would that be true? Yes. Um, are you visible? to anyone else in the park. If anyone else would have been in the park, uh, would you have been visible to them? You, you would have had to be relatively close to see that area. Okay. And this that we're looking at, this path, is it a paved path, is that right? Yes, it is. And it's a walking path, is yes. that right? So it's not made for vehicles. Yes, it's only only for law enforcement vehicles. For I, I understand that. that. Yeah. But people can't just drive there normally. Correct. Let's go back to um, okay. So go to exhibit one thirteen. Right. So this is the what I would describe as the pathway or entrance into the railway tracks area. Would that be true? Yes. Is that gray uh, berm that we see in the distance there, is that where the railroad tracks are located? Yes, the gray is actually the gravel on the berm. Okay. And is this a path that you could drive a vehicle back into if you wanted to do that? Yes. Is there? I know you have crime scene tape up. That obviously wasn't there before. Is there any other restriction to, uh, to getting back in that area? Is there a gate or a fence or anything that blocks your way? No, and, and you could really access it from the woods as well. Okay. In relation to this particular location, where would Noah McGraber have been located? So uh, as you're looking at the uh, crime scene tape, she would be off to the right uh, roughly, I don't know, 150 yards or so. Okay. Fairly well concealed, is that accurate? Very well concealed, yes. Okay, so let's go to the next photo, Exhibit 114. Uh, what does this show us? So now we're on the other side of the crime scene tape, and we will, um, it gives a better representation of kind of the path that would uh, eventually lead us towards uh, Noema Graber's uh, body, but you get a better view of the railroad tracks and then, of course, the, the path itself. Okay. Exhibit 114. Um, again, now we're on the other side looking back towards the uh, crime scene tape. Um, this is basically just the opposite direction of exhibit 114, correct? That's correct, yeah. And then 116? So now we're uh, kind of, again, we're on the other side of the crime scene tape, and now we're looking down the railroad tracks towards where 
the bridges and where Noema Graver was located. The railroad tracks are to the left, is that right? That's right. And 117? That's the opposite of 116? Yes. Okay. All right, now in this area that we see in this series of photos that we've just looked at, uh, was any blood uh, located uh, that would have belonged to Noema Graber? Yes, the, uh, the lab team was able to recover uh, a few samples along the way of, uh, in the grass of blood. Okay, 118 shows us what? Now we're on top the uh, railroad tracks. Uh, you can see uh, the bridge, and we're getting relatively close to where her body was located. Okay. The bridge you can see is the darker area on the railroad tracks up there to the, in the left corner? That's correct, yes. All right. Is this um, terrain rocky? It's very rocky, yes. All right. Is it hard to walk on just normally? Yes. States Exhibit 119, what does that show us? So now we're on uh, the railroad tracks themselves. We'll be looking down uh, towards the location where uh, Noe McGraver's body was located. Okay. And remind me, or remind us again, how you first were able to get to this location. How did you know to come here? Uh, during the search of the park, the police were able to uh, they basically did a grid search. Uh, what kind of stood out to them was they saw a red object in the woods, which later turned out to be a wheelbarrow. Um, once they got close to a wheelbarrow, they could see uh, essentially a shoe, looked like a foot in a shoe underneath a tarp. And uh, this area, it, you just found Noema Graber's body in this area because of the grid search, is that correct? That's correct. Not because of anything Jeremy Goodale or Willard Miller informed you of, is that right? That's right. All right. So Exhibit 119, is this a steep embankment if we go down this area to the trees? It's very steep and then uh, the gravel is, <clears throat> excuse me, also very loose. Um, it's just thick woods. It's uh, not an area that people would go to. And can you see at least a portion of the red wheelbarrow here in 119? I think you can. Um, I think the next picture would be a little better for okay. that, but um, I think that's what that was supposed to represent. You can start to see some of the scene. It's in the center of the photo, is that right? That's right. Okay, exhibit 120 is yes. a closer view of that area, is that right? That's correct, and that, you see the wheelbarrow with the railroad tie on top of it. The dark object, I'm sorry, that's across the red, what ends up being a wheelbarrow is what? It's a railroad tie, so it's pretty heavy. Um, this probably would have been laying by the tracks there. Okay. So was this the area then that you found Noe McGraber's body? Yes. All right. Exhibit 121, what does that show us? Okay, so um, again, a much better representation, so you move we actually moved down off the railroad tracks past the wheelbarrow and now you're looking up towards the railroad tracks and this just kind of represents on how uh, the attempt was made to conceal her with you, know, you see the the tarp you see the wheelbarrow and the railroad tie okay so the tie the tarp and the wheelbarrow are all covering or concealing Noah McGraver's body that's correct yes. all right. And did you ever uh, approach this area and then start to uncover these items? Uh, yes, we did. Okay, so States Exhibit 122, what does that show us? Again, that's uh, just a close-up of the tarp, the uh, wheelbarrow, which you can see is broken, and then the uh, railroad ties above those two. Okay. And is, it, uh, is Noe McGraver ultimately found wrapped under this tarp? Uh, she is. If you uh, examine the picture closely, you can see the shoe um, sticking out underneath the tarp. Is that to the left? Yes. The, at least the bottom of the shoe is what it looks like to me? Yes. Okay. And 123? So uh, 123 is now we've uh, removed the wheelbarrow uh, from uh, Noe McGraber. Um, that, this is how she was wrapped up in, in the tarp. Okay. Is this with the wheelbarrow taken off of her, is that right? Yes. And the railroad tire has been moved somewhat, is that right? Yes. Okay, 
Before we show the next couple of pictures, these are actual uh, body photos of Noe McGraber, is that correct? Yes. All right, and uh, we'll show you exhibit 124. What does that show us? So this is when you remove the uh, tarp. Um, this is basically how she was uh, discovered, how she was represented when we found her. And the blue material that's at her feet, what are the, what is that? That Those are her pants. Okay. And she still has a bra on, is that correct? Yes. All right. States Exhibit 125 is a closer picture, is that correct? Yes. All right. And then was her more items removed where you could see the blunt force injury, at least grossly see it um, at the scene? Yes. We'll show you Exhibit 126. And what are we seeing here? Uh, again, so um, this is just based on experience. Um, my initial uh, suspicion as to looking at this picture would be a, uh, some sort of object had hit uh, Noe McGraver in the back of the head, that, which would have caused that injury. Okay, we'll leave the photos here for just a second. Um, uh, Noe McGraver's body was autopsied, is that right? That, yes, she was. And who did that? Uh, Michelle Cadillier. And who was that person? She's a pathologist uh, that works for the Iowa Medical Examiner's Office in Ankeny. So during the investigation, after locating Noe McGraver, uh, making some determination that um, Willard Miller and Jeremy Goodale may have been involved in her death. Uh, during this investigation, were you ever able to develop any type of motive for why either one of these, uh, either one of these men, Miller or Goodale, would have wanted to harm her? Yes, the uh, Snapchats that John Burnett provided us from Jeremy Goodale uh, were pretty uh, definitive that um, it, he basically says Mrs. Uh, Graber uh, failed the wrong students. So um, it became pretty apparent that the murder was due to, to uh, grading issues. Okay, and the grading issues related directly to which one? They related to Chayden Miller, uh, Willard Miller, who had just had a meeting, I believe, that day uh, with his mom and uh, Noema Graber regarding the... Uh, hit him failing her class. Were you ever able to make any determination as to whether or not Jeremy Goodale had had Ms. Graber as a teacher? Uh, yes, and I believe that he did pretty well in the class. I don't think that he had um, definitely the issues that Willard Miller had with uh, Mrs. Graber. Concerning Jeremy Goodale's involvement uh, with Noema Graber's death, um, were you able to determine how the two of them were connected? Yes, yeah, so about two weeks or so before the actual murder itself, um, Willard uh, Miller had approached Jeremy Goodell and uh, basically asked him if he would be willing to help him uh, kill Noema Graber. And Jeremy Goodell later confirmed that, is that correct? That's correct. And um, do you remember how long before uh, Noe McGraver's death that initial conversation would have taken place? Yes, it was roughly two weeks. Concerning Jeremy Goodale's connection to Noe McGraver's death, was a search done of his uh, phone and Snapchat records? Yes. And were you able to find any information that connected him directly to the death of Noe McGraver? Yes, I mean, the Snapchat records themselves would have confirmed what John Burnett had uh, provided to us. Um, 
just by comparison while we're getting this on the screen, did you have any similar type information from Willard Miller from his cell phone? Uh, from, his, from Willard Miller's cell phone, we were able, there wasn't, I guess, Snapchats, but there was uh, information on there that would implicate him in the murder. Okay. But not uh, Snapchat records, is that correct? That's correct. All right, State's Exhibit 127 is here on the screen. What does this exhibit show us? Yeah, so, so this is uh, what John Burnett provided us, one of the uh, Snapchats that he had captured. This is from Jeremy Goodale, and uh, it's uh, Clorox, and uh, basically the caption says, time to hide a body. This came directly from Jeremy Goodale's Snapchat account, is that right? Yeah, directly from Jeremy Goodale to John Burnett, yes. Okay. This was from John Burnett? I believe, I believe he provided this to us. Okay. All right, State's Exhibit 128, what does this show us? So this, again, is from uh, Jeremy Goodell uh, to John Burnett. And uh, this is just um, a picture of Goodell with a mask on with a hood. Um, and it just says, uh, point of view, POV, you're my Spanish teacher, and this is the last thing you see. The way that he is dressed with a hoodie and a mask, and what also looks like possibly a stocking cap, is that right? Yes. To obscure his uh, face, is that correct? Yes. Um, later in his interview to police, did he confirm that he was dressed in this way? Yes. All right. And specifically, do you remember him saying that he had lowered his mask right before Noah McGraver was struck? Yeah, that sounds correct, yes. I believe okay. he said that. And we'll get into that detail later, but that would match up to what this, that we see here in this Snapchat image on 128. That's correct. All right. And 129. Okay, so 129 is, uh, again, it's a pic it would be a Snapchat picture of a green tarp. You see like a rope in there, uh, and it's uh, someone holding on to a shovel. And the caption here? Uh, it says, no, I'm actually ready. Here we go. Again, this came from Jeremy Goodale's Snapchat, is that right? That's correct. And then I think our last one here is Exhibit 130. What is this that we're seeing? Um, so this would be the wheelbarrow that was uh, eventually found on top of Noema Graber. Uh, you see a shovel that uh, was used to try to uh, dig into the ground, but the ground was uh, frozen, was really hard. Um, and then there's uh, like a lantern and uh, inside the green bag there's some other things that may have been used to uh, try to conceal her. Jeremy Goodale was brought in for questioning, is that right? That's correct, yes. All right, and while he was at the police station, uh, was there a conversation that was recorded between him and a family member? Yes. Uh, who, who was that? Um, it was his sister. Um, I'm not sure of her name, but I believe it was his older sister. All right, and were you able to... Uh, listen to their interaction. Yes, we were. Um, what what was it that Jeremy Goodale said directly as it relates to Noema Graber? Yes, the, the conversation is um, they basically acknowledged they knew they were being recorded, so they were trying to talk soft, but they were still, we were able to hear them. Uh, she had asked him why he had done this, uh, asked if it was something to do with video games. Um, he kind of basically just tells her, he goes, I have no remorse that I did this and I don't regret doing this. Um, really denies any video game influence, anything like that. And this would have been what date? That would have been, uh, essentially it would have been early morning on the uh, 4th. Of November? Yes. 2021? Yes. 
During your investigation, did you, uh, were you able to determine if there was any evidence of planning uh, of the murder of Noe McGraver by both Willard Miller and Jeremy Goodale? Yes, it seemed to be uh, uh, quite a bit of planning, actually. Can you just can you summarize that for us? Uh, Willard Miller had created a basically uh, a murder list of items to to get to commit the murder. Uh, both Goodale and Miller had conducted surveillance on Noema Graver to try to like determine her pattern of life to know where she was. Um, and uh, they seemed uh, the night of the murder to have all their supplies ready to go. On the day that she was murdered, as there, did he provide you information that he had followed her and attacked her in the park? Yes. And by that I mean not only Jeremy Goodale, but also Miller Miller, is that correct? That's correct, yes. Uh, was there another witness that confirmed uh, both Miller and Goodale's location in the park? Yes. Uh, Zoe Fintel, is that correct? Yes. I don't know if I'm pronouncing her last name correct, is that right? Um, what was it that she was able to tell you? Uh, she was uh, Jeremy Goodell's girlfriend at the time. She had uh, met Jeremy at the park roughly 4 p.m. or so. Uh, she saw Jeremy with uh, Willard Miller at the park, and uh, Jeremy Goodell basically told her to leave the park. And as she was walking away, she saw uh, Jeremy Goodell walking towards Willard Miller. Um, and if I remember correctly, I think they were walking the, kind of towards the location where the attack eventually happened. And would this time that she would have been there been consistent with when Noe McGraver would have been walking in the park? Yes. Just a couple more things to kind of clean up here. Um, the bat we talked about earlier, uh, was any DNA located on that? No. Uh, was it looked for? Yes. And the bat, I think you may have said this earlier, uh, Jeremy Goodale describes the bat, is that correct? That's correct, yes. Is that consistent with what we saw in the photo? Yes. All right, and then lastly, the autopsy, which we did mention that Dr. Cattalier did, uh, what was ultimately determined at autopsy? Yeah, it, it was determined Noema Graber was uh, the victim of homicide due to blood force trauma to the head. Just a second. Agent Bill, thank you. That's all I have. Mr. Cook. I think they were both 16 at the time. Okay. And earlier in your testimony, you had talked about um, locating the body of Nohima Graver without any assistance from either uh, Mr. Goodale or from Mr. Miller. Is that correct? That's correct, yes. When uh, law enforcement uh, retrieved Mr. Goodale from his residence and brought him to the law center, uh, his dad came with him. Is that correct? Uh, yes. And whether it was you or other law enforcement, Somebody from the state spoke with Mr. Goodale's father, and Mr. Goodale's father uh, essentially lawyered up for him? Yes. Okay. I have no further questions, Your Honor.